Hello everyone and welcome to our new spin-off lecture in the ECG course titled ECG Features Associating SVT. In this lecture we are discussing some of the common features that we commonly see in ECG during supraventricular tachycardia in order to discuss their clinical significance and whether they help us or not in determining the mechanism. And today we are starting with like a quick review of ST depression, which of course we discuss in a separate span of lecture. As we discussed before that ST depression is one of the very common features that we commonly see in SVT. And of course we discussed before their significance in the SVT, as we discussed that it may be caused by oxygen supply and demand mismatch. They may be caused by unmasking of an underlying coronary artery disease, which we previously called poor man stress ECG, and it may be just repolarization abnormality that is very common with orthodromic AVRT. And we discussed that in the guidelines of the chronic coronary syndrome tire released by the European Society of Cardiology in 2019, they stated that ST depression or ST alterations in general recording during SVT should not be used as evidence of coronary artery disease. And then we mentioned that ST depression in SVT for you, they represent one of two mechanisms, either red dependent myocardial ischemia or just repolarization abnormality. And we mentioned that is there chest pain or not should be asked to the patient and check resting ECG after termination of SVT. For example, in this patient who had ST depression during SVT, after he restored sinus rhythm, ST depression resolved. And so, in this case, mostly it was just repolarization abnormality, although there may be a possibility of stress induced ischemia but mostly it is just repolarization abnormality. But here in this patient, he has a still ST depression after restoring sinus rhythm, and so it was mostly secondary to ongoing myocardial ischemia, and this patient may need CCU admission and monitoring. And so we finalize that when do we need to worry about the patient, if there is persistent ST depression after restoring sinus rhythm, if the patient has chest pain with the tachycardia and we need to check which of them started first, if there is elevated cardiac markers, and of course we mentioned that a small rise is acceptable with SVT, but if there is significant elevation or two serial troponin show marked difference at the time we should suspect ongoing ischemia, or patient with multiple cardiac risk factor. So, ST depression, for example, in a young patient without any risk factors for chronic artery disease and it resolved, resolved after restoring sinusoidal should not be used as an evidence of coronary artery disease. It is just a repolarization abnormality. And I will give you a link for the paper, one of the papers that discuss the significance of ST depression during SVT, whether they represent ischemia or not. But in case of presence of one of these factors at that time, the patient will need CCU admission. So remember, ST depression during SVT should not be used as an evidence for coronary artery disease, but should be assessed meticulously in correlation with history and serial ECG. And of course, ST depression may suggest orthodromic AVRT as a mechanism of SVT due to presence of access to pathway, but not 100% specific as it is a matter of high heart rate rather than the mechanism. So this was a quick summary for the ST depression. Now we are discussing a new feature that is common to see in the ECG during SVT, which is pseudo-electrical alternance. Pseudo-electrical alternance means that there is P2P variation in QRS amplitudes in absence of precardial effusion in patients with SVT, and then it disappears after termination. And why did we call it pseudo? Because electrical alternance itself is a classic ECG sign caused by massive effusion as the heart swings in a pendular motion inside the precardial fluids. So, for example, here, this patient has SVT. During the SVT, we can see here in the strip in Lee 2 that there is a peak to peak variation in QRS amplitude during SVT. And after we restored sinus rhythm, this variation disappeared. This is what we call pseudo electrical alternance during SVT. Of course, pseudo-electrical alternance, as known to many electrophysiologists, is suggestive of orthodromic AVRT because with the accessory pathway, sometimes there is like D or abnormality in the ventricular depolarization. But in many papers, actually it is a function of the heart rate itself rather than the mechanism. So it is not only a sign that appears with orthodromic AVRT, it may occur with AVNRT or atrial tachycardia in case of severe increase in the heart rate, like heart rate of 170 or 180, as this results in non-specific changes in the ventricular depolarization. So although it may suggest orthodromic AVRT, but it is not 100% specific and you should not stick to the sign as like a decision that this patient has orthodromic AVRT and he has an accessory pathway as it may be other mechanism. 
Now we are coming to a new feature in the ACG during SBT, which is sudo r dash pattern and sudo s pattern. Of course, we discussed this feature before in the lecture of SBT, and now we are giving a summary about it. Of course, we mentioned before that sometimes you may see like a small wave at the end of the complex. It is like a negative wave or S wave in the lead two, three, and AVF, and it seems like a positive wave in AVR and AV1, and so we call this sudo s wave and sudo r dash wave. Why did we call them sudo r dash and sudo s wave because they are not parts of the complex they are just the retrograde p wave and so they appear negative in the inferior leads because they are retrograde coming in a reverse direction to the sinus rhythm and they are positive in lead avr and lead v1 and so they are pseudo because they are not r and s wave they are just retrograde p wave but because in the typical avrt the retrograde limb is the fast pass way which is conducting in a very high velocity and so the retrograde P wave appear nearly very fused with the complex or sometimes they may be masked inside the complex and so they don't appear due to simultaneous iter and ventricular depolarization and that's why they seem to be part of the complex. And so this sign is very suggestive for typical AVNRT in which the anti-grade limb is a slow pathway and the retrograde limb is a fast pathway. And if we ask ourselves, do we have an evidence that they are not actual waves of the QRS complex? The answer is simple. Just they disappear after SVT termination. And so I can decide that these were just retrograde P wave, not part of the complex. And so they disappeared after termination. And now to our last ECG feature that we are discussing today, which is the warm-up phenomena and the cool-down phenomena. We mentioned that in the atrial tachycardia, at the start, there is gradual acceleration of the heart rate at its start. And then, when it is terminating, if it is terminating, for example, spontaneously, it shows gradual deceleration of the heart rate. And this is very common with automatic atrial tachycardia. You will not see the sign, for example, with the re-entrant atrial tachycardia or triggered atrial tachycardia. And so we mentioned that Heart rate is usually not completely regular in atrial tachycardia in the automatic type due to these two phenomena. And so, for example, here we can see that there is gradual acceleration of the start, gradual deceleration at the end, and then the restored sinus rhythm. So this sign is very suggestive of automatic atrial tachycardia. But in re-entrant types of SVT, like AVNRT or AVRT, the heart rate needs, seems to be fixed or the same because in the re-entrant mechanism, the heart rate usually doesn't vary during the tachycardia. But in automatic mechanism, you can find slight irregularity, especially at the start at, at the end of the tachycardia. So remember that slight irregularity is accepted in SVT and should not distract you from diagnosis of SVT if all the ECG features are pointing toward SVT and they are suggestive of an automatic etiology for the SVT and of course what is the most common automatic etiology for SVT it is automatic atrial tachycardia. So as the end of our short span of lecture today in which we summarize some of the famous ECG features and their significance we discuss today a pseudopression, we discuss pseudoelectrical alternance and we discussed that it is maybe more suggestive of orthodromic AVRTE, but it is not a matter of the mechanism, it is a matter of the heart rate itself. And we discussed pseudo R dash and pseudo S pattern, which are very suggestive for typical AVNRT. And we discussed warm up and cool down phenomena, which are very suggestive for automatic atrial tachycardia. Our take home message today these ECG features help you to suggest the most possible mechanism of SVT, but they are not 100% specific, and so they should not alter your management in the ER. And of course, we remember that we mentioned before that the mechanism of SVT is not your big deal in the ER, just the management is the same for all types of SVT in the ER. And these features may be helpful to the electrophysiologist in the EP lab rather than the ER or the clinic. Thank you very much for your listening.